Every time you smoke, there's a toxic mix of over 7,000 chemicals coming for you. You turn on the television or you pick up a newspaper or magazine and all the information you see is just controlled by a handful of corporations. So how are you or I or any of us? How can we get our messages out to people? How can you tell people what you care about? You can go on Facebook and compete with uh, hundreds of people who post things that may or may or may not be true. You can go on Twitter and post things in a, with a handful of characters because Twitter is really the place for literate people to hang out. Or you could go in with a sandwich board and walk the streets. You could write a letter to the editor. Or even better, you could go to public access television. Public access serves your community on a first come first serve basis. And whether you're rich or poor, doesn't matter. It's first come, first served. Everyone in the community is welcome to come to public access and talk about not only the issues that are important to them, but if you have a, a poem to recite, a story to tell, a song to sing, just anything at all that's in your mind or heart to tell, you can come to public access. Public access in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where I'm speaking right now, has been around since 1980, and I've seen it change events in Fayetteville. And uh, the nice thing about public access now in the 21st century is that it's not just on a television channel, but it's also on the Internet. So you can reach people around the world. So if you're just, if you feel frustrated at not being able to talk to people, not being able to get your message out, and you think there's no way to do it, well, take heart. There is. Public access. It's a vital component of our First Amendment rights. So public access. Like the man says, use it or lose it. Hello, I'm Steve Boss with Arkansans Against Guns on Campus. I am public access and so are you. A wave of murder which is sweeping the eastern third of the nation is being committed by creatures who feast upon the flesh of their victims. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened and almost incoherent. Officials and newsmen at first discounted those eyewitness descriptions as being beyond belief. However, the reports persisted. Medical examinations of some of the victims bore out the fact that they had been partially devoured. I think we have some late words of just arriving and I'll interrupt to bring this to you. This is the latest disclosure in a report from National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. It's hard for us here to believe what we're reporting to you, but it does seem to be a fact. When this emergency first began, radio and television was advising people to stay inside, behind locked doors for safety. That situation has now changed. We're able to report a definite course of action. George, I'll check it out in the shower for you later. <laughs> you boys can have the cavalry. Me, I'm gonna fly for the infantry. Tired of playing housemaid to a temperamental mare. <laughs> That's the first good news your horse has ever heard. Go on, Gertrude, kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Damn you, I've told you about curbing that horse's tongue. You ever try putting a curb on your tongue? No. Nobody else ever tried it. I suppose it takes one of your southerners to handle a horse. When are you going to take a punch at him? Oh, I couldn't do that. He's a Facebook friend. The breaking up of the American Union as it now exists is the basis of my plan. And that destruction must be made upon the issue of Zombie. slavery and on no other. The Union must then be reorganized on the great principle of emancipation. This object is vast in its compass, terrifying in its prospects, but sublime and beautiful in its issue. A life devoted to it would be nobly spent or sacrificed. If the federal government and its constitution are opposed to my way of thinking, the fault is not mine but theirs, and I shall continue to oppose them with every means and every weapon at my disposal. Who wrote that liberal crap? A wise man by the name of John Brown. Where'd you get it? That's my business. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. You meant that pro-zombie shit for me, didn't you? Take it any way you like. Sure, he meant it for you. He tried that abolition stuff I immediately found out I came from Kansas. Never mind, Bob. Come on, Jeb. Let's turn in. There's no regulation against a cadet having his own ideas. Never mind, dude. You find the truth hard to take. Zombies will get their rights when they earn them. Without the help of Mr. John Brown. You mean that renegade line to include me? America for humans. Now and forever. I'll answer that right here and now. I've taken a lot from you southern snobs. For 50 years now, you've been watering your precious family trees with a sweat Zombie for slaves, piling up wealth and snobbery until now you think you own the government and the army. And anybody who disagrees with you is a lying renegade, a rabble-rousing traitor. Will you get this from me, Stuart? And all you other Mason-Dixon plutocrats, the time is coming when the rest of us are going to wipe you and your kind off the face of the earth. Zombie lover, I want to kick your ass. Ugh. Ah! Ah! Mommy! Ah! force has been active among the regiment of cadets. The exact nature of this subversive campaign and the persons responsible for it have not been fully known to us until this moment. Stuart, by every rule of the academy, you should be discharged from the service, and your associates are no less guilty for their part in this outrageous affair. Sure, it's my fault, but I'm a product of my environment. That's not quite true, sir. It was my fault. We're all equally responsible, sir. That's right, sir. That's right, sir. If I believed that you were guilty alone, Stuart, I should have sent for you alone. As for you, Custer, and the rest of you, you must be taught that lying to protect a friend is sometimes an extremely dangerous practice. Now, I'm not so greatly concerned about the fight itself as I am about its cause. All seven of you men have violated the first sin of military conduct, the traffic and violent exchange of political ideas, which are not the affairs of an American soldier. You must be punished, and punished severely. I shall request of the War Department upon your graduation next week that all of you be assigned to the most dangerous branch of the United States Army. The second United States Cavalry, now stationed at Fort Leavenworth in the Kansas Territory. Mmm, Kansas women. How long has this undercover activity of yours been going on? Long enough. Very clever idea of your fellow conspirators to plant an agent in our midst. Your dishonorable discharge will be drawn up at once and you'll be given until sundown to remove yourself and your personal belongings from the limits of West Point. Good. You wouldn't like
like what I'm thinking now. Uh, you were going to tell me something more about Kansas. So what do you guys do in Smallville for fun? Well, as I remember, half of Leavenworth takes a bath and the other half gets drunk. And since there are only two bathtubs in town, things get kind of exciting around midnight. Kid! Kid! <laughs> so how did you get stuck with a stupid nickname like Kid Carson? Well, Mr. Carson and my dad were very good friends. And they were so sure I was going to be a boy that they named me before I was born. Uh, you could still be a transvestite. Me too. <laughs> I'm going to put you new officers straight from the start. This is Fort Leavenworth and not West Point. You were sent here to man a frontier garrison. Three of the officers you're supposed to be replacing are buried back of the hill in the little military cemetery. The other four haven't been found yet. The regiment of mounted rifles has only one job, to keep the peace in Kansas. And we're here alone. There's no other fort between us and Santa Fe. And we're proud of that responsibility. We've got a tough reputation in the Army, but they respect us in the West. See that it stays that way. Order of the day. Lieutenants Longstreet and Holliday, take B Troop and put them through close order drill. Lieutenant Stewart and Custer will take eight men as an escort for the freight caravan leaving at noon for New Mexico. Draw the usual supplies and report to me for final orders. Doing here? Just taking my boy toys out for a spin. Oh, the convoy. That's a silly idea, Dad. He thinks that man John Brown's behind every bush. Oh, I just worry about you becoming a Democrat while I was gone. Darn it. The bladder's really full. Let's just cut to the chase. You haven't been exactly slow for a couple of days. I've never seen such a pair of whirlwinds as you and George Custer. I just want to say, well, I'm ready to be exclusive with my saddle swords. What? Say, would you happen to have a spare Robin Hood costume? I see. Have you thought of any particular names for the children? George Custer taught me how to kiss. Want to see? Well, it's quite an honor, but no thanks. I, I don't really deserve it. Well, hello. Hey, this is quite a surprise. The corporal's looking for you. Says it's very urgent. The only time for us is Holland and Frank will take the day along. Make a little bit, kid? Sure, I would. Those two boys? I'll give you three to one. I can name the winners. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Which one do you want? I'll take that, Ben. Good. all volunteers not to enter Kansas unequipped, nor to display their weapons to public view. Let that be understood beforehand. Warn them also... Not so fast, Father. Warn them also that our plans must be known to ourselves alone. That they join me in the clear knowledge that all traitors of the cause must die, wherever caught and proven to be guilty. Tell them that we stand by one another while a drop of blood remains, that under no threats or pressure do we make confessions. So we had to detail when we got to the border. Now pick these new men up from Palmyra. Volunteers, sir. They're the credentials. From Illinois. You've come a long way. And we'll go the rest of it. We came here to fight slavers. The sooner the better. With That's, right. That's good. Right. We'll put you to work at once. Kids, better look after these gentlemen. Fine. This way, boys. Let's go for a We've received the news we've been waiting for. We break camp, Raider. Yes, sir. Let's start tearing down these tents now. Oliver. Jerk. I'm all right. Where's Father? Father. What has happened to you? Where are the zombies were told to bring? A couple of pro slavers tried to grab us on the train. I shot one of them and jumped off. You left four helpless people alone to save yourself. I had to do it, Father. It was me or them. You cowardly fool. You should obey my instructions. We leave at once. Oh, 
strangers? Good morning. At the Eat Holiday's wagon? That's right, sir. My name is Smith, Jonathan Smith of Newton. Well, what can we do for you? I believe you are carrying some freight consigned to me. Well, it might be. Have you got something to show for it? I have this receipt from the shipper. Yeah, it's kind of hinky, meeting us out here in the middle of nowhere. My home is in Newton, sir, but my place of business is much closer to the trail. Eight cases of Bibles. That's right. Come on, Wendell, we'll unpack these Bibles for the parson. Jason, bring up your wagon. That guy wasn't on Celebrity Apprentice, was he? The way it seems to me. Isn't the kind of a face you'd forget in a hurry? Yeah, he kind of reminds me of one of the County Brothers. Well, then he's either from Boston or he's a missionary. He's got the stink of the grave about him. Been a lot of bad trouble over across the river lately, Mr. Smith. That murdering's got John Brown's on the loose again. Better keep your eye up to you, fine. Thank you. We shall. This stuff sure is heavy for Bibles. How would you know? You ain't never even saw one. Ah. <laughs> Hold on there, dude. Ah, uh, just more of a committee, really. You know these men, Raider? Yes, sir, very well. This one, Stuart, comes from a rich slave-owning family in Virginia. He calls you a lying renegade once, and I jumped him for it. John Brown. John Brown? I have nothing personal against you men, but I will deal harshly with any interference. I never thought I'd see that zombie-loving carcass ever again. Well, that's one of the troubles with the Army, Stuart. They don't teach you to think ahead. They do one smart thing. They teach you never to turn your back on an enemy without first making sure he's hot. Stop it. Do not saddle ourselves with a killing just to satisfy your personal quarrel. Why not? It would just add to your army of the undead. I intend to be a marked man. Back to your horse, Raider. Back to your horses, all of you. I've given you fair warning. You can keep your heads or lose them as you wish. Move on. Bibles with triggers on them. Time to party, boys! Hell, it's a short movie. Where can they go? That just means that we can kill more of them than they can kill of us. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them, boys! You'll thank me for this in 1980.
Bang, bang! Oh boy, oh boy! Help it. I didn't do anything. I have a slow attention span, kid. Just give me your name. Jason Brown. Yes, yes, but I never did anything. He made me go along. I never killed anyone, I swear it. I'm getting out. I'm quitting. You've got to take me with you. Okay, we'll talk about that over a nice bubble bath. He says he talks with God at night. But God doesn't tell people to kill one another, does he, miss? He's a, he's a good man in a lot of ways. But he's changed since Asawatomi. Those people he killed. They got down on their knees and begged him for their lives. And he struck them with a sword. Him and Raider and Kitzmiller. I was there. I saw it done. I tried to stop them, but they pushed me aside. That's how it was. We're starting at once. I'll take the first troop west to Tecumseh. Stuart, you and Custer will take the first platoon of B Troop and search thoroughly from Clinton to Dutch Henry's Crossing. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. These are your orders. Find John Brown and bring him back here. Alive, if possible. His force is well armed now and strong in numbers. We also suspect that new volunteers are drifting in from the east to join him. Be on the lookout for them as well. Retire to your respective troops. What's that? They've caught some more of us. No one's been caught chasing us. Not even you. You've committed no crime to be afraid of. I'm sick of being afraid. I'm sick of hiding like a hunted thing. I want to walk free like other people. You will, Jason. You are safe now. No, I'm not. Not as long as he keeps killing and thinking that he's right. He can't be right, can he, miss? I don't know. His reasons may be right, Jason. They may even be great and good reasons. But what your father is doing is wrong. Terribly wrong. And he'll keep on repeating that wrong as long as he lives. Then... Then I'll never be free of him until one of us is dead. I know that now. My life don't mean anything. But if he dies, maybe this whole scheme of his will die with him. I'd rather have it that way life, even if he is my father, against many thousands. I'm going to tell you where to find him. Jason, I'm not trying to... I'm going to tell you anyway. In the house of Hubel Morgan, Palmyra. That's where they went. That's their headquarters. Tell the soldiers. It's better that way. His life, against many thousands. Jeff, he told me everything. The whole nightmare of his 15 years, even the place where his father is now. He said he wanted me to tell the soldier. Palmyra, at the house of a man named Shubal Morgan. Ah, the Burning Man retreat. Jeff, I'm frightened. That boy is crippled for life. And that man on the train, he died for principle. A man killed him for principle. 
one of them is wrong, but which one? When we stop the zombie rebellion, it will all be over, baby. Yes, by word from the east and by guns in the west. But one day the words will turn into guns. Oh, Jeff, can't it be stopped now? Can't the slaves be free before it's too late? Give us some sugar, baby. That's me all over, clumsy custard. Or can I get into this too? Yeah. You got yours last night, George. I've seen you work before, son. That's where I learned. There's credit one more to my account, kid. I'd like to let the interest accumulate. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, George. Kid, I... Don't be long, Jeff. Goodbye. Goodbye. Just remember, baby. George has my saddle blanket, but you got my heart. Hey, keep an eye on my sweetie while I'm gone, baby. Heck no, we're going to hunt John Brown with you. Say what? Yeah, we come to join up. Who do we see? All that fat on you be too tempting for the zombies, boys. Big fella. Well, what the? Well, the major sort of turned us down too. But here we are, Lieutenant Jim. And you couldn't even stop by a subway on your way here? Well, we don't want you to get lost. You see, I know every wrinkle of this here country just like my own face. I should have you horse whipped. All right. Get in the back with the Rosicrucians. Better do it tonight. I'm going to town, George. You alone? Don't be crazy, Jeb. That town's full of jayhawkers. They shoot you on sight. Risk is our business. Good luck. Y'all feel like playing soldier tonight? Huh? I'll bring the Cusco. Howdy, boys. Howdy. Pretty good looking horse for this part of the world. Yeah. Kansas is all right for men and dogs, but it's pretty hard on women and horses. <laughs> Say, look at that brain. That's an army horse. Maybe you just bought him from someone. No, they don't sell him. Nobody rides that brand but a soldier. You keep your eye on him till I get back. He says ain't no time for barbers. The fellas that ain't trying to hide their faces for some reason or other are too mean to spend the money. I've heard the shop was Biker Central. Oh, say, I'm afraid of shame, Pat. I'm afraid they'll get up and cut my throat. Have you ever seen John Zombie Brown? Sure, he came in here once. Strange looking man with a head mark on his throat. Oh, it's an old barber superstition. A, a little red line that runs all the way around here. Anybody born with that mark is bound to be hung. Cool. Hey, have I got one? Not yet. Maybe. Oh, my. Keep your hand away. Get it. This was quite an idea, Stuart. You coming in alone first to look around? Or is this one of your agents? I ain't never laid eyes on them before. I swear it, I, I don't know from Adam. What were you up to? I'm bored. You figure it out. My next move is plain enough. Didn't they teach us how to handle spies when we caught them red-handed? I've seen James Bond movies. When you catch them, this will make you quite a hero, Stuart. The class of 54 will turn out in a body for your funeral. And even hang your picture in the West Point Library. Want some copies for your wallet? Get him out of here, Red, or we're wasting time. Just having the last few words with an old classmate of mine. And I had them coming to me. Come on, get up. I'm gonna give you a good look at what you came to see. Can't 
afford to take chances, sir. He was sent here as a spy. It's my advice to get rid of him. Let's train him up. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. What did you hope to achieve by coming alone to Palmyra? Okay, look. People are watching right now, and they're expecting me to break into some eloquent soliloquy about brotherhood and why we should all get along, but I don't have time for that William Shatner crap. So the truth is this. I'm way too tired, and you're way too old to keep going on with this crap. So just stop the crap right now, and let's just let's just go home, okay? You know, we'll just go home and have some hot dogs, if you know what I mean. I'm not on trial, but the nation itself. Are you too stupid and blinded by a uniform to see what I see? A dark and evil curse laying all over this land. That's right. A carnal sin against God. It can only be wiped out in blood. Okay, look. All right, look, here's the deal. If the zombies promise not to shout, to be quiet, they'll have some rights. Like black people and women and Mexicans, they'll have their rights a little bit at a time. And, and, and like gay people, okay? A little bit at a time. That's how it works, okay? Trust me. Time? For 30 years I've waited for the South to cleanse its soul of this crime. Since childhood I have been possessed of the fire of correcting this wrong. I tried peaceful agitation. As God is my witness, I tried. Peaceful means failed long ago. Now I shall force a decision by bringing both sides into armed conflict. Letters, words, talk, the time has ended for that. Strength and action I wanted now. Not a voice crying in the wilderness, but a David, armed with the power and the glory. David had a son, right? A son? Yes, Absalom, who deserted his father and went over to the enemy. What are you trying to tell me, Stuart? He's legally changed his last name. Jason is dead. So be it. My son has paid for the sins of this world with his life, as once did the Son of God. It shall not be in vain. Well, if there's nothing else, I'll just be on my way. My advice to you is to find peace with your maker. of planning our destruction. But the hand that has never failed us has come once again to our protection. It's not with malice or revenge that we take this man's life, but in just retribution, as befits all enemies of mankind, all enemies of God. Ready, sir. Ha-ha! <laughs> Fooled you. You know, this is just not going to end well. Yeah. 
nice ride, both ways. Sing along, boys. Ready? That's my girl. She's a dear. I love her. I love her. Because she buys me pizza and beer. Don't you guys know any of the words? Congratulations, boys. Thanks. That was excellent. I didn't recognize the song. Where did it come from? It's an old army song, a farewell. These young men have all been promoted and are ordered back to Washington. That's splendid. You lucky devils. I had to wait 10 years for my captaincy. And I also followed tradition by proposing to my wife the same night. <laughs> Would you like some refreshments? Yes, I would. Good idea. I think I might make a stroll through the stable. I think I left my jock strap in there. I'll go with you. Maybe I can find it. There you are. George has something to say. Be kind. Well, I don't know just how to start, Kit, but there's an old Indian woman who hangs around the fort and tells people's fortunes. She's supposed to be a wonder at it, and, well... Yes, George? Well, she said I'm going to get married soon to a very beautiful girl. Did she, George? That's very nice. She knows you're gay, George. Kit, were you ever by any chance a blonde? Why, no, not even as a baby. Are you sure? This old woman's never been wrong before. Absolutely sure. She might still be right. Let's ask her if you've been dreaming about Sting again. Let's. Wait a minute. Kit, are you in love with him and not with me? I guess I am, George. You gonna marry him? Stand back. I'll handle this. I wonder if I said the wrong thing. Yeah, you're the perfect sidekick. You know, she's going to charge $3. She could at least speak English. She says that this is one of the last times we'll all of us be together as friends. <laughs> Ask her something good. Like, which one of us is going to lose our virility first? When is time when he got it? She says that one day you'll all be famous men, great in battle, but better enemies. What? Men from the north and men from the south who've been to West Point? What does she think? The audience is stupid? Where'd you ever pick up this old faker, George? I can tell better fortunes than that with tea leaves. <laughs> well, just what are we going to fight about anyway? Yeah, who's going to start it? Let's cut to the chase. It's almost closing time. She says the fight has already started. Somewhere in the east, a man is lighting a torch. Now, at this very moment, the two of us will help to kill him. But none of us can stop him. You promised to pay me what's due when you got the money. How dare you demand a settlement of a private matter? 
Information to our deliverance, not three days off. Well, that's putting the cart before the horse, isn't it? I've done a job for you nobody else can do. Oh, I was right at Palmyra. The cause itself means nothing. I'm only holding you to your word. Are you indeed? Have you forgotten so quickly my method with disloyalty? I haven't forgotten anything. But you've got the money to pay me, and you can't afford not to. Then I did give me memory. I haven't waited 30 years to bargain with a rogue at the final hour. What's up, Hot Stuff? Oh, hi, Chip. You know, you're almost enough to make me rethink this whole sexual reversion process. Promise me a surprise tonight. Tonight I'll remember the rest of my life. The only girls you know are cabin boys. Uh, I'm not talking. Maybe you don't rake a lot of tires you think you do, Chip Stewart. Thank you. George is telling me you promised him a good time. So when do I get to join in? You don't. I'm very fond of you. Thank you, Kip. I haven't told you this, but we have a deep understanding. I'm sorry, what? I'm going to take care of George for the rest of his life. Kip! That is, he's the man I think he is. Oh, Kip, I have my faults, but I can be as faithful and loyal as any man that ever lived. I see. Now, wait here, both of you. Tough luck, son. I guess we can't all have charm and good luck, too. Make sure you don't fall in that little bighorn of yours, Custer. <laughs> Charlotte, I want you to meet Captain Custer and Captain Stewart. This is Charlotte Davis. We were schoolmates together in Boston. Ma'am. Thank you, Captain. Yes, indeed. A great pleasure. I've heard so much about you, Captain Custer. Me? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh... Well, I, I mean, uh... Why are you in my life again? I came to find you. I know what you think of me, Stuart, that I'm no good. Well, maybe you're right. But maybe I've got something to tell you that'll change your opinion. What if? Suppose I told you that I left John Brown three hours ago with a well-armed force of men, not very many miles from where we're standing. I'd say you were spreading malicious gossip. Don't forget, Colonel, I was in the service once. I was young and I made a mistake. I didn't know that then, but I do now. I guess some of the things we learned at West Point stay on inside of us a lot deeper than we realize. Anyway, I couldn't stand by and see my country torn apart by a madman like Brown. I had to come here. This was something a lot bigger than myself. Maybe you just want that bounty, dog. I said why I came here, and that's the truth. But I am entitled to any reward. I'm even willing to go back there and rejoin him tonight, just in case he gets suspicious or changes his plans. Now, what more proof do you want than that? I believe him because it's too dangerous not to. How soon can you start, Colonel? We'll be ready to leave in an hour. The officers are all here. Call them at once and proceed with all speed to Harper's Ferry. By nightfall, we should be 35 miles into Virginia. What about the men from Pennsylvania, sir? They're late in arriving. We cannot wait. Wouldn't that be taking a long chance? No word of us can leak out until tomorrow, maybe even two or three days, and then we'd be 1,500 men. I don't see that there's any reason to hurry. That sounds sensible. I disagree. I'm anxious to get out of here, and time is our most valuable weapon. Uh, you're in command, sir. But that's been the fatal mistake to many an expedition. My advice is to wait.
Von Braun promises that if we leave the arsenal in his hands, he will harm none of us. No! Bring down guys! We'll have you! Quick! Understand we're here in a righteous call. Their interests are also ours, the good of the whole nation. We'll leave a lesson at Harper's Ferry for the rest of the South to profit by. Why about those fools at the foot of the hill? It's well past noon. We can wait no longer for the Pennsylvania. What are you watching, Raider? The North Road, sir. The North Road is over there. This is the Washington Turnpike. Well, I thought our men might circle the town as That was not their orders. Help with the wagons. Yes, sir. Well, don't you think we ought to wait another half hour? It might be that... Brown? John Brown? I am. You defended me on Facebook, I think. Thanks to Mr. Raider, we now meet again. It's time to close up shop now, okay? Once more, sir, you overrate your strength in supposing that I can be taken against my will. Is that your final answer? It is. We prefer to die here. <laughs> Bang! Bang! Oh, boy! This is fun! Boys! Cover my ass! Battering ram! Falling oil! Catapult! Stop! Stop! If you think this is getting silly, just consider the fact that most Americans actually learn history from movies worse than this one. This has been a public service announcement. Have you any last words, John Brown? Be good!
Every time you smoke, there's a toxic mix of over 7,000 chemicals coming for you. You turn on the television or you pick up a newspaper magazine and all the information you see is just controlled by a, a handful of corporations. So how are you or I or any of us? How can we get our messages out to people? How can you tell people what you care about? You can go on Facebook and compete with uh, hundreds of people who post things that may or may or may not be true. You can go on Twitter and post things in a, with a handful of characters because Twitter is really the place for literate people to hang out. Or you could go in with a sandwich board and walk the streets. You could write a letter to the editor. Or even better, you could go to public access television. Public access serves your community on a first come first serve basis. And whether you're rich or poor, doesn't matter. It's first come, first served. Everyone in the community is welcome to come to public access and talk about not only the issues that are important to them, but if you have a, a poem to recite, a story to tell, a song to sing, just anything at all, just in your mind or heart to tell, you come to public access. Public access in Fayetteville, Arkansas, where I'm speaking right now, has been around since 1980, and I've seen it change events in Fayetteville. And uh, the nice thing about public access now in the 21st century is that it's not just on a television channel, but it's also on the Internet, so you can reach people around the world. So if, you're just, if you feel frustrated at not being able to talk to people, not being able to get your message out, and you think there's no way to do it, well, take heart. There is. Public access. It's a vital component of our First Amendment rights. So public access, like the man says, use it or lose it. Hello, I'm Steve Boss with Arkansans Against Guns on Campus. I am public access and so are you. So I now I want you to imagine something for me. I want you to imagine that um, you've been involved with somebody for a few years and you've made a few assumptions about that relationship like they're just on holidays together and if one of you decides to spend a lot of money, you'll let the other person know ahead and some little things like that. You haven't talked about all of them, but you've just made some assumptions about them. And you get this call at around 2 o'clock in the afternoon that says, Honey, I, the, the best thing just came up for me. This woman at the office, um, she has this expert ticket to go to the app. And she said, I could go with her for next week. Well, so across your mind, just for about two to three seconds, you have this picture of, of this person that you think that you love. Um, packing their bags, walking out of their door, going down the elevator, getting going through the revolving door, out, getting on the bus, going off, catching the taxi cab to go to the airport, going through the um, security system where they do the metal detector thing, getting on the airplane, flying all the way across the ocean, and skiing for a week in the Alps over Christmas. And that takes about two or three seconds, and then all these things just come flying out of your mouth, unexpected, unthought through. And then you write this song. Later, much later, you write this song. <laughs> I didn't mean it. 